we'd like to start off basically, you know, that's my cue handing it over, um, with, you know, a, kind of a seemingly evident question, and that is, um, you know, why drugs um, um, are considered harmful and why they are criminalized, or rather the latter, why are they criminalized? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and some, some drugs in particular, why are some drugs criminalized as opposed to others? And of course there's an obvious answer to that, and that's the answer that's the, the boilerplate answer as it were, because they're dangerous. So drugs cause harm to people and to the people around the people who do drugs. And some drugs supposedly more so than others. However, it's not really that simple. Um, criminologists often differentiate between harm on the one hand and crime on the other. So, many harmful activities are not crimes, and perhaps some crimes are not really that harmful. So, for instance, polluting the environment causes a lot of harm, but not every form of pollution is illegal. On the other hand, recreational drug use, arguably, or some forms of recreational drug use, are not really that harmful, but they're nonetheless illegal. So, what then makes drugs harmful, and some drugs more harmful than others? And of course there's a kind of common assumption that the danger of any given drug lies in the drug itself, in the substance especially in its pharmacological properties. That is to say, in how any given substance affects physiological and biochemical processes in the human body. But this is a fairly reductionist view on drugs and the risks associated with particular drugs. Well, there's no denying that some drugs have more of an effect than others, some drugs are more potent than others, perhaps even more addictive than others. Yet, numer numerous studies have shown that the potential risk of any given drug um, cannot be reduced to its pharmacological properties. So, what's probably more, far more important is who does the drug and under what circumstances. That's the old idea of set and setting. Yet, this is just an aside to illustrate that the whole debate about the dangerousness of particular drugs is not really as straightforward as it seems. And you're probably well aware that every decade has its demon drug. Now we live in the decade of crystal meth, where crystal meth is the demon drug of choice. Interestingly enough, a lot of the images that are shown to illustrate the dangerousness of crystal are pretty old and just kind of recycled images from the kind of days when heroin was considered the demon drug of choice and so on and so on.